Hello and welcome. A new case in formulation of a LPP. And this time we are with transportation of goods. A problem in which we need to transport goods from factory 1 and 2 to sales point number 1, 2 and 3. But this time we are going to take only two variables because we know that in case of transportation problem, if we want to formulate an LPP, we have to take the number of units equivalent to number of rows multiplied by number of columns. That means in this case we have to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 variables. But this time we are going to learn how to formulate an LPP for a transportation problem by taking just two variables. Why to take only two variables if it is possible? Because we can solve this transportation problem by graphic method only if we have only two variables but in each and every transportation problem we cannot take only two variables we can take two variables only if there are two rows and three columns or there are three rows and two columns this is the biggest restriction okay in this case it is possible so we are going to take two variables only in this lecture, we are going to formulate the LPP only. In later case or in later in a lecture, we shall solve this problem itself through graphic method. Let's start. Now, what is the problem? A company manufactures daily 1200 units at factory 1 and 1000 units at factory Two. That means 1200 supply available from factory 1 and 1000 units of supply available from factory 2. The daily demands at the three sales points are 1700 and 500 units respectively. Sales point 1 demand 1000 units, 2 demand 700 units, 3 demand 500 units. So this is the balanced transportation problem. The shipping or transportation cost rupees per unit are given in the table. 14 to transport 1 unit from factory 1 to sales point 1, 13 to transport from factory 1 to sales point 2 and 11 to transport 1 unit from factory 1 to sales point 3 and similarly these costs are 13, 13 and 12 rupees per unit in case of factory 2. Formulate this as an LPP. Now first of all this is transportation problem, this is cost data and we need to transport this much number of units daily. So naturally the objective must be minimization. At the minimum transportation cost we want to transport this much number of units every day. First of all to have objective function or any other things we have to take the signs of number of units and as we have discussed earlier we are going to take two variables only so decision variables how many decision variables that is not problem we have decided to take two decision variables which two let x equals to number of units transported or sent from factory 1 to sales point 1 say here x units are transported from factory 1 to sales point 1 and y number of units sent from factory 1 I am not mistaking it is factory 1 to sales point 2 yes here so logically from factory 2 to sales point 1 now we need to transport only 1000 minus x units similarly from <coughs> factory 2 to sales point 2 we need to transport 700 minus y units here Total supply available is 1200 out of which X are transported to sales point 1, Y are transported to sales point 2. 
So 1200 minus x minus y number of units can be transported from factory 1 to factory 3. 1200 minus x minus y number of units. In this case, 1000 minus x units. In this case, 700 minus y units. In this case, we have two alternatives. From 1000, we can subtract these two or from 500, we can subtract this. 500 minus 1200 minus x minus y units. Let's open the bracket. It will be 500 minus 1200 minus into minus plus x minus into minus y plus y. So ultimately it will be minus 700 plus x plus y. So it is x plus y minus 700 units. From factory 2 to sales point 3. Okay, now what? These are per unit cost of transportation from, one, from factory 1 or 2 to sales point 1 or 2 or 3. And these are now number of units to be transported at this rate. So if we multiply these two, in each and every cell we can have cost. And the summation of all these costs will be the total transportation cost which we want to minimize. So objective is minimize total cost of transportation of so and so units and that total cost will be for this cell it will be 14x 14 rupees into x number of units for this cell it will be 13y for this cell it will be 11 into 1200 minus x minus y 11 into 1200 13200 minus x into 11 minus 11x minus y into 11 minus 11y for this cell it will be 1000 minus x all into 13 so positive 13000 minus 13x for this cell it will be 700 minus y all into 13 13 into 700 positive 9100 minus y into 13 minus 13y for this cell it will be x into 12 positive 12x y into 12 positive 12y and minus 700 into 12 minus 8400 so ultimately the total cost would be 14x minus 11x that is 3x minus 13x that is minus 10x plus 12x so positive 2x for y similarly 13y minus 11y 2y minus 13y minus 11y plus 12y plus 1y that is plus y now for constant values 13200 plus 13000 that is 26200 plus 9100 that is 35300 minus 8400 means 26800 Sorry, 26,900, not 800. Okay. So, this is the total cost. That is Z function for us. 2X plus Y plus 26,900. Okay. Now, don't get confused watching the constant value in Z function. If you want to solve this problem through simplex method, just ignore this at the time of substituting the data in simplex table. Only at the end of the solution, we have to add this into the value of z function. In case of graphic method, there is no problem whether x function is having any kind of constant value or not. Okay, now what can we do? We have to find out other constraints. Two constraints we know that they cannot be zero, the number of units. So let's go for other constraints. This function we want to minimize z equals to 2x plus y plus 26,900 subject to. Now other constraint we can find out only if we take the non-negativity into consideration first of all. 
x is non negative y is also non negative now if we take x and y as non negative the impact would be in this case 1200 minus x minus y r is also number of units so it is also non negative greater than or equal to 0 so 1200 is greater than or equal to x plus y therefore we can say that x plus y if you read from right to left x plus y less than or equal to 1200 yes similarly 1000 minus x is also a quantity it should be non-negative so 1000 minus x greater than or equal to 0 non-negative therefore 1000 is greater than or equal to x if we read from right to left it will be x less than or equal to 1000 similarly this is also non-negative quantity so it should be or it must be non-negative 700 minus y non-negative that is greater than or equal to 0 <coughs> that means 700 is greater than or equal to y if we read from right to left it is y less than or equal to 700 and at last x plus y minus 700 is also a quantity that means is also non-negative so it is x plus y greater than or equal to 700 all these are constraints which are to be taken into consideration while solving the problem to minimize this objective function z equals to 2x plus y plus 26,900. So in this case we formulated an LPP for a transportation problem having two rows and three columns taking only two variables. If we have three rows and two columns then also we can take two variables and formulate an LPP for that transportation problem. Now we have only two variables that means we can solve this problem through graphic method also. It is not compulsory to use simplex method. But in this lecture we are not going to solve this problem. In next lecture we shall solve this problem through graphic method. That's it. Thank you very much.